Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part four of Kerbal Spaceships Are Serious Business. We are have decided to stop mucking around with the really early rocketry stuff and twiddle our thumbs until we get access to early orbital rockets. Now, this will give us access to some bigger rocket engines, which, which should hopefully help us start to go further and higher and stay up there longer, mainly. So uh, let's take a look at our new parts in the, well, not in this vehicle assembly building, in the space plane hangar. So this node only adds three engines. We have the RD-103, the AJ-10 upper stage, and the Vanguard X-405. These are all very early rockets. Now, the RD-103 was uh, developed by uh, Valentin Glushko, I think, and it was the power, it powered an early, like, short-range missile. The AJ-10 and the Vanguard are both part of the Vanguard rocket, which was originally the rocket that the US wanted to use to launch their first satellite, because they were trying not to give any work to a certain Werner von Braun because of the whole ex-Nazi thing. Anyway, after some work, what we did was we built this together into a supersized sounding rocket, which I will call the Rain Doll. Uh, that's named after the encryption system that was ultimately converted into AES. And we are go. Give the engines a moment before releasing the clamps because the real fuels uh, mod, as well as causing your engines not to light because of gravity going the wrong way, it, it now uh, requires some of the engines, or some of the engines require time to throttle up. And if you let the clamps off before they're throttled up, you will find yourself falling back onto the landing pad, and because of course you're falling backwards, you might lose, uh, you might suddenly find your engines uh, cutting out. So, uh, you know, you can work around that as well. Supposedly there's a way to pump fuel from the uh, clamps, but I had not yet figured that out at this point. Regardless, this thing just heads skyward like a bat out of hell. And we have engine burnout. We're moving at about two kilometers per second. I don't think we're gonna set any records for altitude here, but importantly, we have biological experiments. Aha, a bat showed little sign of any, of trying to right itself, aha. Cause it's in zero G. That's pretty cool, let's keep that. Now these experiments, you have to return to the ground. You can get, you know, partial data if you, uh, if you wanna transmit, but it's better to return it. Second one, I'm going to do from space. Fruit flies, Drosophila melangaster, something which I learned all about when I did biology at school and university, of course. Can't really get away from those things when you're teaching genetics. And of course, survival of the fittest, another genetic uh, evolution, you know, concept which is very important. And uh, I think it's important to talk about it because we are falling through the atmosphere and we are really wondering whether this thing will actually survive. Is it fit or will I have to perform some sort of intelligent design to fix it? Ah ha ha ha, yeah, trolling everyone with that. Okay, but seriously, uh, let's see what happens here. 55, we're just falling fast here. And I can sense this thing starting to feel the forces. Look, the G meter is going up. Two, three, four, five Gs. And uh, yeah, we're going to be fine. 10 Gs. Pegging the G meter at 15 Gs. Of course, we still have a display there. 16. I think we peaked out at about 16 or 17, but survived just fine. As we go higher and further, we are probably going to need a proper heat shield for it, but until then, we'll be fine. Of course, oh shush, old me, you're just prattling on and you're trying to fill time. Uh, yeah, you know, it'd be cool if you had experiments that required certain g-forces, wouldn't it? Anyway, uh, let's put this back to uh, old me so we can land it. And... Touchdown with... Oh, what's that? Oh, the parachute was destroyed. Well, of course it was destroyed. It, it wasn't so much destroyed as we cut it loose so it didn't drag us comic-like across the surface. So, what have we got? Um, apparently we haven't got anything. So let's just do that. Recover, and we get 24 science. That is a veritable bounty of science from the upper atmosphere. Truly learning about what it takes to live in space. We shall apply that to learning all sorts of things, such as building stuff to help us live in space. Or, more importantly, building stuff to help us get into space. Mm. 
Okay, so now these new and bigger rockets work, I think it's time to, that we commit ourselves to putting a satellite in orbit before this episode is through. So yeah, we need to get stuff into orbit, we need to collect science, we need to do things. That's all good. All these sort of things are good. I'm not sure we have all the parts we need, but I am going to commit to this. Uh, I assume that I can get the science in two years. Is there anything else we should get? Sounding rocket medium. Um, you know, I can always do these for fun. For money! These are always super easy. We've, we've got that altitude and we can make a couple of thousand on that. Okay. So let's build an orbital rocket. Okay, so this is what I have come up with after lots of building and simulating. It, there's a lot of interesting compromises, but let's get it in the air. Engines throttled up, fired, and released the clamps. Now, very important. See, it says up the top, insufficient avionics locking control supports 20 tons, vessel 39 tons. So, I do not have control of this right now. It is just holding uh, attitude control, right? So the avionics won't let me steer it. Uh, I'm not even sure if the signals are getting through, but I I'm using stability control, and it seems to be kind of doing a decent job at not making it move over too fast. At the bottom, we have four of those Vanguard rockets on the side and a single Vanguard 405 in the middle. Now, the plan here is I am using the onboard stability system to allow this thing to perform a slow gravity turn. You can see this turning very slowly. As it wobbles, it occasionally loses control, but that's fine because I want it to turn, but I just don't want it to turn too fast. Meanwhile, we have plenty of thrust. We're cracking our way through the sound barrier. And in fact, we get this crazy particle effect once we break the sound barrier. It becomes an intense ball of death chasing us into orbit. L quick, quick, get away from this, get away! Okay, no, seriously. This, um, the plan here is we don't have any control. But as soon as I stage, the rocket will be less than 20 tons and I will suddenly have control of everything. Now, this is because I haven't unlocked the tier, the node, that includes uh, like orbital capable probes, right? So it has a probe that control, controls a 20 ton rocket and it has a sounding rocket probe. So this, uh, the, both of those probes are way heavier and more power hungry than they need to be, but we can get something to orbit and we're getting ready to stage and fire. Oh crap. Okay, never mind. Simulator. No! No! Oh, we survived! We have survived that trial by fire or whatever. I'm serious. That was I was totally worried I was gonna lose this thing and have to relaunch it. It worked fine in the simulations, but you know what simulations are like. Okay, so this thing needs to make sure it picks up enough lateral velocity. It can't be going too steep vertically, otherwise it doesn't really get the speed it needs. Uh, because I had to tilt it on the runway, I couldn't quite get my initial vector pointed exactly eastwards, but we're close enough that we're taking a bit of an advantage of the orbit of the Earth. I should have done this at, the, at, at a, an equator launch site or something, shouldn't I? Also, yeah, working with the working in the vehicle assembly, oh, not the vehicle assembly building, in the space plane hangar was rather, it, it is starting to annoy me, so I think I'll start to, start to spend money on the vehicle assembly building. Now, this thing is way more complicated than the original Vanguard design would have been, incidentally. It would have had, you know, two stages. This has, like, five stages. Uh, and partly that's because I've had to make compromises because uh, the probe bodies and everything are more massive, and partly because I just overbuilt this thing to heck, right, to make sure that I have enough Delta V. The Vanguard, right, was a rocket put together by the Navy. They had, like, a civilian research group, so uh, they kind of argued that the first satellite launch should be a scientific payload, and so it, uh, and it looked better if it was the Navy that did it, rather than, you know, Werner von Braun, former Nazi and all that. Okay. Second stage goes, and this is the really, really long burn. This is using the AJ-10, which is the upper t upper stage that was originally developed for the Vanguard. It's a hypergolic engine, basically. It mixes, uh, um, it fix it mixes UDMH, you know, un unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine and uh, nitric acid, and generates a small amount of thrust from it. Originally, they proposed a derivative of the Aero-B engine, which I've been using up till now, but, uh, and there is in fact an Aero-B on this, but I think 
the R Vanguard designers, they went and they decided to do something more original. And this engine ultimately became used on a bunch of other spacecraft. And I think it has a use on the... It was used also in the Apollo missions. The service module engine was derived... Is a, like a direct descendant from this engine. So this has got about three kilometers per second of delta V. Okay, and a new me here. So... What you notice here is I have, I'm not flying exactly along my prograde vector here because I needed to keep the spacecraft as high as possible. So uh, depending upon my initial launch vector, sometimes I found that it was uh, going to potentially fall back to Earth before the main engine fired. But other than balancing my way through that, it was a pretty easy launch. Anyway, back to old me. Approaching engine burnout and we just got to put this node exactly on the horizon here. So get it on the horizon and then the final stage kicks in and this this is going to be cool. Okay, so, so watch this. Fire those, dip, fire those, those thrusters and now the AeroB lights up and the whole thing starts to spin. Now, for mass reasons, I'm not taking that large one meter uh, control avionics module into space. It just is too heavy. Instead, I have this sounding rocket. Uh, controller here. The sounding rocket controller is tiny. It's still kind of heavy for its mass, but it does qualify. The problem is that you cannot steer it at all. So I have this whole thing using spin stabilization, which does in fact work. I mean, <laughs> you know, it doesn't work for everything, but it does in fact work in Kerbal Space Program. So I'm using this to make sure that any uh, oscillations off the center ultimately get kind of not so much damped but the throttle vector kind of continues in a straight line here so we're hoping to get just enough speed to put myself into orbit i'm also my time to apple apps is three two one zero and we're okay so we're going to start falling back oh, okay we gotta get this thing into orbit we're running out of time. We've just gone through apoaps here. And the final stage is a Baby Sergeant uh, solid rocket motor. And the moment... Oh, time to apoaps is actually increasing again. Cool. So, and fire that. And it fires for a whole six seconds. And camera control or camera readjusting shows that I have in fact made this thing got, get into orbit. So, wait. Yes, so this payload is probably way heavier than what was originally put into space or what they originally were planning to put into space on the Vanguard. Although, to be fair, <laughs> I have a slightly bigger rocket than theirs. Yep, so we got our first artificial satellite contract. That is another bold step. We are going to fly around the Earth a few times and while we're up here, we have a thermometer so we can collect science data. And that will hopefully let us see all sorts of useful information about the planet Earth. Yeah, we have actual instrumentation on this. Now, the Sputnik, the original Sputnik launch, it basically didn't do anything except transmit signals. It just sent out a beep saying, Hi, I'm here! Hey, just imagine I'm a nuclear warhead! Yes, this is not propaganda. No, I mean, seriously though, the Sputnik one was a huge achievement, but it didn't actually do much in terms of science. And, you know, that would, of course, much later on, you know, there was a lot of real good science done. <laughs> I mean, the Sputnik uh, program, it was really, the, the rockets were the science. You know, apparently I heard that the original Sputnik design was essentially built without any drawings. They just didn't have time to actually build the drawings, sign, you know, draw the drawings, sign off of them. They were just like, give me a sphere, give me a radio transmitter, let's bolt these antenna on it. And now we, they had a rocket. It took, they, they built it in like three weeks or something like that. And then it operated for about the same amount of time. We just had an onboard battery and everything. And this is just flying around and collecting the science. We're flying over Africa. Uh, so you can see that some places we don't have reception. Now, uh, in the top left, you see it says no connection and there's a little red calculator icon. That's just remote tech saying that it has no control. So I can't do anything with it at this time. I have to wait until I get close enough to our, our ground station. Now, there's, unlike my uh, previous interstellar playthrough there are actually tons of ground stations by default so you don't need to worry about putting up a, a satellite network right away there look we got a ground station and we're flying over um what is that oh yes australia yes of course we're we're in the southern hemisphere and we're up 
We made it up to over s almost 700 kilometers. That's great. Sputnik actually made it up to like 900, but it's Perry. Perry G was like was 200 kilometers. Okay, do we get more science here? Desert. I'm just kind of time accelerating and looking for biomes that I haven't collected data from. Highlands. There can be only one science reading. Let's send all that data back. So yeah, even I guess I'm in a slightly higher peri apps or peri G than uh, Sputnik. So you might imagine this would last maybe slightly longer than uh, than Sputnik. I don't know. Sputnik lasted, I think it was launched, uh, and then three weeks later its batteries ran out, and three months after that it fell back to Earth. And while we're up here, we should enjoy the sunrise. Look at this. I'm just going to sit and appreciate this moment of grandeur, the first sunrise seen in space. Uh, not that there is any camera or anything on board this thing. That would be kind of a nice mod, is to have much better camera support. There, there are cameras, but I don't like the way they're implemented. I, I really want more camera support. What I actually want, by the way, modders, is a mod which lets you have a camera on the spacecraft and put a window, like, anywhere on the screen, so you can put, like, four or five different cameras on screen at once. That, that I would pay money for, I tell you. Oh, look, we're coming up on the California Peninsula and the, the Gulf of uh, California. Uh, this is obviously part of Mexico. This is not California where I live. This is the California landmass, which is not the same as the state of California. I live in Northern California, and we do have our own peninsula, but it's not this. Uh, however, yeah, we're, we're paying the guys at squad, we're flying over, sending them some signals, except that this is presumably sometime in the 1950s. This, I don't think I've gone even a whole year and I've got a successful satellite launch. This is boding well for my future space program. Oh, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get quite the same battery life that Sputnik did. I, I think we've been in orbit not even four hours, and we are out of power, even with that big extra battery I attached. Still, that was a great first achievement, and no doubt will be followed by many, many others. We should be proud. The achievements we have made today will be remembered for years to come, and yet they will be forgotten as soon as somebody you know, astronaut crashes their spacecraft through, uh, well, through no fault of ours. So now we've achieved orbit, do we have new- Oh yes, we have lots of new contracts! We have- Oh, we should have got that science data from space. Well, at least we could have, uh, we can just put a sounding rocket up and get that. More sounding rockets, lunar impactors, lunar flybys, lunar orbits, past the Kármán line for the crew thing, successful re-entry, this is all great! And I think we shall do this in future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.